Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. Well, the big day has finally arrived. Star Citizen Alpha 2.4 is now live on the public servers, and now everyone can enjoy the new, highly anticipated features of the biggest patch since 2.0. So, in today's video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the new features and give you an idea of what to expect in the new patch. But first, a quick disclaimer. The majority of this video was shot in the PTU, so there may be a few minor tweaks and changes that have occurred for the live release. Let's start off with what, in my opinion, is the biggest addition. In 2.4, Star Citizen takes its first steps towards persistence. Up until now, every play session in the baby PU has started off the same way. You log in, wake up in your easy hab, and summon a ship. You then had the choice to go do missions, commit various crimes, or just play around and make your own fun. In 2.4, you can still do all that, but with persistence, you're, you aren't starting from scratch every time you launch the game. Your character's loadout is saved between sessions, as well as that of your ships. Any reputation or criminal rating you may have accrued is also carried forward from your previous session. Ship damage, ordnance, and fuel levels are not carried forward in this patch, but expect those features to be added very soon. The missions have a purpose now. When you complete them, you're rewarded with a new in-game currency called Alpha UEC. Alpha UEC is separate from the UEC on your RSI account and allows you to purchase items in the various stores around Port Olisar and Area 18 on Arc Corp. The reason for the separate currency is so that CIG can wipe it along with anything you bought with the credits from time to time for testing purposes. Different missions will give you different payouts, but rewards typically range between 250 to 2500 credits. Missions include the standard Reboot the Array, Kovalex Investigation, and ICC Probe missions you are already familiar with, along with a few new missions to 2.4. The new missions are tied into the reputation system. For example, if you reboot enough comm arrays, you're given a mission to guard Korea Security Station from enemy players who are trying to hack the computer to lower their criminal rating. The mission ends after approximately 10 minutes, or when an opposing player manages to complete a hack. You're rewarded credits for successfully completing the timed mission, as well as a small bounty for each criminal player you kill in or around the station. On the flip side, criminals who turn off enough arrays are given a mission to keep them shut down. The mission is similar in structure to the guard duty mission in that it ends after about 10 minutes or when the array is reactivated by an opposing player. Rewards are given for keeping the off array offline for the full 10 minutes and for each non-criminal player you kill in or around the array. Aside from missions, you can also earn credits by salvaging wrecks around Yela and other select locations. Each wreck will spawn anywhere from four to eight crates around it. The crates can contain FPS weapons or trade items that yield instant UEC when you pick them up, such as alcohol and cigars. There's also a crate full of Big Benny's noodles, but it doesn't seem to be lootable. The Benny's crates, along with others that are completely sealed, are among the biggest frustrations to would-be salvagers. Payouts for salvaging may not be as consistent or as high as some of the other missions, but the risk is also much lower. Your biggest threats are a few random pirate spawns and hostile players. One thing you should know, however, is that the loot is not persistent between clients. For example, if you pick up a box of cigars, another player can come along behind you and pick up that same box. So there's really no need to fight over the salvage. Now that you've managed to earn a few credits, it's time to spend them. Now, as I said previously, there are various shops located both on Port Olisar and around Area 18. Currently, purchasable items include FPS weapons, armor, and civilian clothing as well. Kasaba Outlet on Area 18 is now open and sells a variety of clothing. The current selection is a little bit limited, and the clothes themselves seem somewhat simplistic, but that's kind of to be expected, as the character model is, of course, still in development, and the clothes will have to change along with it. Also, according to lore, Kasaba Outlet is a bit like the Kmart of the Star Citizen universe, with simple, affordable clothing for the masses. Cubby Blast in Area 18 is also fully open for business. 
Aside from the weapons we've been drooling over for almost a year, they also carry a full lineup of armor and flight suits. Flight suits come in a variety of color combinations and will protect you from the vacuum of space, but little else. The armor comes in two styles, Outlaw and UEE. Each style has three variants, Light, Medium, and Heavy, and offer varying levels of protection against small arms fire. As I said, Port Olisar has also been expanded to include shopping areas. There are currently three small stores open in each of the station's four struts. The shops are there for our convenience, but carry a more limited selection than their Area 18 counterparts. Cassaba has opened a small outlet that sells civilian clothing. Garrity Defense will supply you with flight suits and armor. And Live Fire Weapons carries, well, you guessed it, guns, ammo, and the medical supplies. Unfortunately, in the current patch, you are unable to purchase ship weapons or components. But I'm sure those options will be added in the near future, as there's already empty store in Olasar waiting for it. Besides buying things in stores, Alpha UEC is used to repair, rearm, and refuel your ship at Cry Astro. Fuel is probably the most expensive commodity for most players, but repairs on larger ships can get quite expensive as well. Ammo is relatively cheap, but in the last build I tested, missiles weren't being restocked. Though the missiles have been restocked in previous builds, so I'm sure it will probably be included in the live release as well. Another money seat comes via death and ship destruction. When you die of natural causes, which in this game means getting shot or blown up, you're charged a small respawn penalty of 250 UEC. If you commit suicide, you will not have to pay the fee. This is so players will not be penalized for getting stuck or other various glitches. The first pass of ship insurance is also in the game. If your ship's destroyed for any reason, you'll have to wait for an allotted time to respawn a new one. Optionally, you can pay an insurance premium to bypass the timer. The amount of time and money to respawn the ship is based on the value of the hull. Larger ships, like the Starfarer, can take upwards of 30 minutes and tens of thousands of UEC to respawn. Smaller ships, on the other hand, will respawn in a matter of minutes, and the premiums are much, much lower. Another major change in 2.4 comes in the form of the new item port system. This system replaces the much hated hollow table in the hangar for adjusting your ship's loadout. Your ship loadout can be modified either in your hangar or on a landing pad at Port Olisar. Speaking of hangars, the port system also allows you to customize them with any flare items you might have acquired. It also replaces the old web interface for spawning ships in your hangar. If you own multiple hangars, you can select between them in-game via the options menu. The only downside is that your hangars currently only have one bay, and there's no way to expand them. Ships in the hangar are given a numerical size designation that currently ranges from 1 to 5. 1 being snub fighters like the Merlin, and 5 for much larger ships like the Starfarer. The VFG Industrial Hangar is now the smallest of the four currently available. Its single medium pad can only fit a single size 1 to 3 ship. The Self Land and Aerial View Hangars can fit up to 3 size 1 to 2 ships, 2 size 3 ships, or 1 size 4 ship, such as a Constellation. The Revel and York Hangar is the largest and can fit twice as many ships as the Aerial View or Self Land. It is also the only hangar that can fit size 5 ships like the Starfarer. I'm confident CIG will eventually expand all the hangars to fit the new system, but for now, space is a bit limited. And that's about it for the major features of the patch, but there are some other changes to the game that are worth mentioning. The first is your character loadout. You have two available loadouts that you can switch between by using the closet in your easy hab or in the lockers near the Port Olasar airlocks. One loadout is for civilian clothing. When you spawn into the game for the first time, this is what you'll be wearing. The second set is your flight suit slash armor set. You should switch to the set before exiting an airlock, otherwise your character will of course die in the vacuum of space. You start off in the game with a set of civilian clothing, a basic flight suit, an energy pistol, and 2700 UEC. In order to customize your appearance and loadout, 
you'll have to visit the appropriate store. Once you've purchased an item, you must go back to that store to equip or unequip it, as CIG has not yet implemented an inventory system. When it comes to loadouts, your character can now carry up to four FPS weapons at a time. Your default pistol is located on your hip and is drawn using the one key. The second weapon slot is on your character's chest. Currently, the only weapon that fits in this slot is the P4 AR ballistic rifle. The chest slot is selected with the two key. The last two slots are on your back. These slots can equip any combination of the three remaining weapons the ATT-4 Energy Rifle, Devastator-12 Energy Shotgun, or the Arrow Sniper Rifle. These two slots are both accessed using the 3 key. Pressing 3 once will equip the third slot. Pressing it again will swap to the fourth, and vice versa. Speaking of keybinds, 2.4 has made some significant changes in that area. As you probably know, there are three main movement sets in Star Citizen. On foot, EVA, and piloting ships. The new bindings seek to make transitioning between the sets easier by making the movement commands more consistent between the sets. For example, the left control key on foot is bound to crouch and prone. The same key now also makes you strafe down while EVA or while piloting a ship. The space bar of course does the opposite by making your character jump or strafe upwards. It seems that anytime a new batch of people gain access to 2.4, I spend more time answering key binding questions than actually playing the game, so I highly recommend reviewing the control changes before entering any of the game modes. For those that don't like or can't get used to the new bindings, CIG has been kind enough to give us the option to revert to the old settings in the key binding menu. The last thing I want to go over is the new ships and ship components. If you watched my previous videos, you know that the Reliant Core is now hangar ready. It can be spawned in any size 3 ship hangar slot. The Gemini is also hangar ready and uses the same size 5 slot as the standard Starfarer, i.e. only in the Rebel and York hangar. Both the Starfarer and Gemini are of course flight ready, and Port Olisar and Cryastro have been expanded to accommodate these massive vessels. For ship weapons, the size 5 Combine Ballistic Cannon has been modified to fire explosive rounds, making it an effective flat cannon for taking down smaller ships. There is also an entirely new weapon, the AMRS Pyroburst Cannon. It's a size 3 ship-mounted energy shotgun. It fires a large spread of plasma that does some serious damage at short range. The Pyroburst and Combine Cannons both take some practice to use effectively, but are very devastating once you get the hang of them. The Combine Cannon comes stock on the Starfarer and Gemini, and both weapons should be available in the Voyager Direct Store for purchase and in the Electronics Access Store for rental. And that about wraps up another Star Citizen video. Now I know lately I've been releasing a lot of content that is unrelated to Star Citizen, and I apologize for that. I've just been so excited with my new Vive headset that I wanted to share the experience. I even live stream one or two of those sessions on YouTube, but it seems you guys really aren't as interested in that as I am. So going forward, you'll be seeing a lot less of that type of content. I'll still do a few off-subject videos when Star Citizen News is lacking, and I have the extra time. But for now, my primary focus will remain on Star Citizen. Be sure to let me know in the comments for any suggestions you have for future content. Would you like me to do some more YouTube live streams? Let me know. Is there a specific game you'd like me to try? Put it in the comments. If you have any suggestions for a Star Citizen themed build in Space Engineers, I'll look into that as well. I read every comment on my channel, and I strive to answer as many as I can. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest content. I'm also on Twitter for those of you that want to see the latest Star Citizen news, or get a look at my latest project. Who knows, you may even catch a glimpse into my personal life from time to time. The link can be found on my channel's banner or in the description of this video. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.